together to listen to your word. And we pray, O Lord God, that your spirit will be upon us. With the conviction, the enlightenment of your spirit will be upon each and every one of us, Lord. So that we will continue to learn and grow in our relationship with you, O God. In our journey to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And we believe, O Lord God, that as we live on your righteousness, as your kingdom is the priority of our lives, all the things that we need will be added unto us. And this we ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sisikapin ko mag-inggap kaya ko. churches sa Kenya na wala po silang mga mentor, wala po nagtuturo sa kanila. So, uh, it is my prayer that I could be a blessing to them, not just a uh, kanayang church na mag maging blessing tayo sa kanila financially to build then a uh, church, but uh, it is my desire to share what the Lord has uh, given to me. Okay, let us open our Bible in the book of uh, our Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. The same chapter, the same verse, but different topic. Okay, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, last week we have uh, uh, studied about the quest to prioritize the kingdom of God. Were you learning from it? Yes? Parang nag-English lang ako, parang ganyan na reaction mo. Parang sa gusto niyo sabihin, according to me. It is in this way that we are not limiting our uh, uh, the people who could learn, who might be interested to listen to the Word of God, as you know, we are in YouTube. So, uh, if I speak English, we could reach more people, not just to the Filipinos. Okay, as we have learned, yes, uh, last Sunday, pursuit means the act of chasing or striving. Yes? You still remember? Hinahabo. Okay. Uh, another meaning of pursuit is to follow in an effort to overtake or capture. And today, uh, we ask the command of the Lord to seek the kingdom or pursue it. This, it is the same, but what does it mean? We have the quest. We have, we have been prioritizing or we are trying to prioritize the kingdom of God. But as Brother Val said, we don't find the kingdom because we don't know what's the kingdom all about. Amen? Okay? So, what's happening? <laughs> what, should we, what should we be doing if we say we seek or pursue the kingdom? Isn't it a good question to consider? No, this works. Huh? We always? Study the word. Okay, we, we study the word. Very good. And obey the word, very good. Studying the word and obeying it is different uh, thing. You cannot just uh, study it without obeying. Studying would be nonsense if you don't obey what you study. Yes, what else? Implements it in our lives. Huh? Implements the word in our lives. Uh, implements, study or obey. I think that's the same. I've heard some, something here. Yeah? Follow his command. Follow his command, obey, I think. Magkamatanak. <laughs> uh, magsabuhay or obey. <laughs> Relative. <laughs> Anything else? That's all you know when we say, when we seek the kingdom of God. Prioritize. Okay. In what way or how could we say what what should be, we be doing if we prioritize the kingdom of God? Seek Him. Seek Him. Oh, what should be, we be doing if we seek Him first? Okay, see that? <laughs> Our aim for this topic is for us to understand what does it mean to seek the kingdom of God. You cannot seek if you don't know or you don't understand what does it mean to seek the kingdom. 
Yes? Second aim, for us to seek the kingdom with all our heart. Why? Because in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 29, But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find Him, if you seek Him with all your heart and with all your soul. So even though we seek the Lord, but if we don't seek Him with all our heart and with all our soul, we won't find Him. So the reason, although lots of Christians say they are seeking the Lord, they have, the Lord has been found by them because they don't seek the Lord with all their heart. Yes? Okay, so take note that God commands for us is not to seek the Lord or not to seek Jesus. Did he say that? Am I right? Huh? God said, seek the kingdom. Okay. God said, seek the kingdom, but it says here, but from there you will seek the Lord your God. Does seeking the kingdom and seeking God a different thing? The same. I would say in a way, but not exactly the same. I'll show you my point. The context of Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 29, if they were thrown out to other countries, but from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find Him if you seek Him with all your heart. The context of seeking the Lord is for the Lord to help you in your present circumstances. But it doesn't mean that you are seeking Him to be the Lord of your life. Amen. Yes? Okay. So, I'll explain that later. Seeking is the key to finding. Yes? You could not find if you don't seek. That's why the Bible says, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. So if you haven't found the kingdom of God, you're not seeking it. Yes? With the seeking comes understanding of the kingdom and how it operates. Yes. Okay? Only then we will be able to understand how to live in the kingdom and experience its fullness in our lives. Last week we have learned or studied that the answers to all our needs or the main need of everybody that would cover every needs that we have is the kingdom. So even if you don't have if you, even if you have lots of money and you don't have the kingdom, all your needs are not covered. But if you have the kingdom, all your needs are covered. Yes. 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 Thank you so much. Okay, so let's closer look at the word seek. The command to seek first the kingdom. It should be our principal and most important activity of our life. Amen? Amen? So if the Lord commands us to seek the kingdom of God first, it should be our principal and our, our main activity of our lives. But unfortunately, that's not the real truth. The truth is, we have other principal things and the kingdom of God is just a minor thing to us. Yes? <laughs> okay? How do we do that? How to make the kingdom of God our principal and most important activity? Okay? Does seeking the kingdom of God the same with seeking the Lord? I've explained that already. How can we find the kingdom if we don't know how to look for it or what to look for? Makes sense. Uh, uh, just a point of illustration. Way back home, there are lots of treasures left by the Japanese. Yes? Not just in Bohol, even some other places in, in the Philippines. Am I right? Yes? But there were those uh, the gold seekers or gold uh, treasures, treasure hunters. They got gold detectors with them. 
The native people, they were seeking or trying to dig this cave because there are clues, there are, uh, there are clues and maps that says there are gold uh, in that cave. Unfortunately, while digging overnight, he found uh, a, like a soap bar of, uh, I, I don't know if we call Ankitran in English. How, how do we call Ankitran in English? Alkitran, the same. Is it the same? Alkitran. Yung itin bang binabalot? Uh, it, uh, parang balita ba? Pang ispalto. The same is asphalt. Asphalt na nga lang. <laughs> okay, so, this, uh, this labor of ours was digging overnight because before the treasure hunters with the, tre with the gold detectors with them left Left, left the cave, the signal was so strong. So he went back there overnight, digging and digging by himself, and he found this uh, like a, a soap bar, and he just set it aside. Do you know why? He was expecting to see a gold just like what it looks like. But usually, when gold are hidden, they are being rough. Are you with me? So it is hard for us to find the kingdom if we don't know what we are looking for. Yes? Yes. 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 Okay, does it make sense? Yes. Seek means to pursue with vigor and determination. Amen. Does it make sense? I don't mind if you are serious as long as you are meditating or contemplating on the words or of the words of God that we are learning today. Seek means to pursue with vigor and determination. Vigor means with strength, with force, with determination. And explain, to explain that, Jesus as our shepherd would leave the 99 to seek the one which is lost. Why? Because seeking means to pursue with by God and determination. So, Jesus would left, would leave behind the 99 just to seek the one which is lost. Why? Because that is determination. And determination, another example, right after the parable of the lost shepherd, the woman lost one of her coins, lit a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. From this verse only, we would we have been given a lot of clue of how to seek the kingdom of God. So the woman lost one of her coins, lit a lamp. So without light, you would not be able to seek the kingdom of God. That's why John chapter 8 verse 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall never walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light. So without God's word, you would not be able to seek God's kingdom. Okay? Another one, sweep the house. What's the point of sweeping the house? <laughs> to clean it. In other words, if we don't clean our hearts, if we don't clean our lives, you would not be able to seek the kingdom. Because that's to pursue with Bible, with strength, with determination. But my main point here is until she finds it. She didn't stop seeking for it until she finds it. So if you stop seeking the kingdom of God, even if you have, you have not found it, you are not seeking it. Yes? Okay, let me, let me, put, let me put it this way. Let's say for example, and let's say for example, I lost Ella somewhere in this place. Say, let's just ask my wife. How about Ella just didn't fell from the window? And he, uh, Ella went somewhere without us knowing. Would you go home? No. no. Or see you. Huh? <laughs> what did you say? Sweet? Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> So determination means you would not stop seeking until you find it. 
Lots of people, they say, Oh Lord, we are seeking your kingdom, but they go to church without experiencing God, without feeling the presence of God, without finding the kingdom of God, but it's okay with them to go home, come back again, nothing happens, they haven't found the kingdom of God, and it's still okay with them. That's not seeking the kingdom of God. Seeking the kingdom of God involves strength, involves force, involves determination that you would not stop seeking it until you found it. Amen. 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 So, at least we could check ourselves. I, 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 I check, check, uh, I am, am I seeking the kingdom of God with determination? Did I stop or did I continue seeking the kingdom of God? At least, that's a good point of reflection. Before we blame God or before we say, Oh, seeking the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto us is not true. Not knowing or ignorantly it is our fault or we are not really seeking the kingdom of God. Hindi pa abaya mo na yung kanina, Jay. Medyo, natanggal na ano, na ano ko na yung ano. Okay. To seek means to study. Yes? As just what Sister Rika said, seeking the kingdom of God means studying the word of God. Okay. For no enforcers to cast criminals, they study their modus operandi. Brother Rudy could, uh, is the one who knows what I'm talking about. Much more than us. Yes? Amen. Have you seen movies uh, wherein the, the chief of police or the law enforcers, when they wanted to catch criminals, they got lots of pictures from the boards, they're studying where, what time, what is the motive of, of the criminals. Without studying the modus of the operandi of the criminal, you would not be able to catch them. And so with the word of God, without studying his word, you cannot find it. Yes? So, if we say we are seeking the kingdom of God, are we studying this word? Di maka amen na Students seek knowledge and understanding and so with the citizens of the kingdom of God. Yes? Someone, verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law he meditates day and night. Verse 1 says, Blessed is the man who doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, in the seat of the, uh, the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. He meditates day and night. As a citizen, as, a, as, as, as believers of God seeking the kingdom, are we meditating the words of God day and night? <laughs> so, if we meditate the word of God during the day, what are we meditating during the night? <laughs> so, seeking involves studying, and studying involves meditating God's word day and night. The same thing with a policeman or soldiers, because if you are a soldier or law enforcers, most of the time, or there are lots of time, you would not be able to be with your loved ones. Am I right? Especially if the chief, if your husband is the chief of police, he would spend lots of time in the office, spend spend lots of time studying on the modus operandi, and they would even forget birthday parties. They would even forget their other other uh, uh, responsibilities in the family. Yes? Okay? To 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So you know how to divide, how to apply the word of truth. Okay? One more. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12, I told them last night about this, but 
For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. So, as a believer, as a child of God, you should reach to a point that you should be able to teach. But this verse told us that by this time you ought to be teachers, but you need someone to teach you again. Hallelujah. I think, not, not, not to, not to, uh, <laughs> yun bang bulahin si Joy, anong term sa English niya? Uh, ter, uh, may term sila ginagamit dyan. Uh, anong term ginagamit sa English niya? Pag, pag binubulatik mo ang isang lalo kong babae? Flowering words. Ha? Uh, <laughs> uh, flatter. Uh, hindi sa pag-flap, <laughs> not to flatter Joy. If I would Romel and uh, Sister Lynn, I would be so happy that Joy at her young age, he, she is able to preach. Joy is just 18, gonna be 19. Lots of people on their 50s not able to preach. Hallelujah. That's not good. Am I right? So we should we should reach to a point that it would be our desire, not necessarily to teach God's word in the church, but you should be able to teach your children, to teach your loved ones, to teach the people of whom you are living with with the word of God. Yes? Okay. To seek also means to explore. Hallelujah. This is a good part. Explore. This is what I keep saying that lots of people, they use the internet and the, the, the program they are using is the Internet Explorer. Although Google Chrome is becoming more popular these days. <laughs> but in the internet, we explore a lot. Yes? Do we explore in studying God's Word? Exploring it's, means to examine or investigate. Yes, so once we, we, or when we are reading a particular verse, especially the ones you don't understand, you should examine it, you should investigate, you should ask questions why this, this verse commands us to say something or to do something. Are we, are we doing that? Yes. Uh, what does this verse mean? Uh, I haven't encountered that verse. The pastor didn't teach us that verse. You should try to meditate by yourself. You should try to explore. You should try to understand. And those things beyond your understanding, that's the point you need to ask your pastor. Not just being spoon feed. Kung ano yung pinapakain, yung sinusubok, that's it. Hallelujah. Okay, we should explore its power, its laws, its government, its culture, its society, its commands, its economy, its taxation, everything. You should, we should explore. Another thing with explore, or the kingdom of God is worth exploring with the rest of our life, and yet, you will just end up knowing very little thing. Do you get what I mean? You explore, you study, you keep on examining, you keep on investigating God's word to the rest of your life, and yet you end up not exploring everything. The more you know, the more you learn that it is just a little that you have learned. That's why <laughs> the Bible says, he who says he knows everything knows nothing. Those who say they got lots of knowledge, they got lots of learning to the Bible, those people doesn't know everything. The worst is, the Bible says, those who say he knows everything, he knows nothing. Yes? yes. yes? yes. To seek also means to understand. Are we trying to understand? Okay? To understand means to perceive and comprehend the nature and significance of or to grasp. Take note, learning is different from understanding. What's the difference? Yeah? Learning, no, pinaka-aralan. Learning, I think, is natutunan. I 
understanding is nauunawaan. Am I right? Yes? Okay? So, you cannot pass or teach or share what you don't understand. Uh, I, I think it was Jake who mentioned uh, about uh, a pastor who said, if you don't share the God, God's word, if you don't teach God's word, you, uh, it's just like something you're neglecting the most responsibility of your life, isn't it? Isn't it that my pastor uh, quote that? Yes. Huh? Does it make sense? Yes. So if you don't share God's word, if you don't share what is God's word, especially, especially to your loved ones, you are neglecting the first and foremost duty of a believer to preach the gospel. Actually, anti-Christ pa nagsabi. Anti-Christ pa nagsabi. Hindi ko yun. challenge ka sa mga believer na Alam mo yung alam mo yung word bakit hindi mo sinasabi sa mga laban ko parang hinahayaan siya mo pa sa uh, uh, like so, siya magpunta sa death. So in essence, if we know that a man who doesn't believe in God after death will go to hell, why didn't you share God's word? But lots of people are doing that. They are busy providing the needs of their loved ones, but they don't care about sharing or teaching God's word. Why? Because they don't understand it themselves. How could they share? How could they teach if they don't understand it themselves? So, seeking the kingdom also means understanding it. Okay? Mental capacity are basis. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, maybe Brother Hami would have an idea of what is... What are the mental capacity act basis? Any idea? No idea? You work in the hospital. Maybe we, we, are, we are working at different setting. Uh, maybe <laughs> Sister Imelda. Any idea? Okay, joint nursing student. Capable of? Making decision. Making decision. Okay, good one. Just a point of interaction, sharing. See it? Okay. You are able to understand. You cannot make a decision if you don't understand. Aside from you are able to understand, you can remember conversation. Yes? The law is saying that if a person cannot remember conversation, cannot keep information, he hasn't had a mental capacity. Okay, aside from that, you can pass the conversation or information. So I understand, I remember, and I am able to pass it. Because if I understand, but I could not keep and retain my understanding, I don't have a mental capacity. And if I understand, I keep it, but I am not able to share it, I don't have a mental capacity. And it is so with the kingdom of God, if you don't understand, if you cannot keep the conversation or the knowledge and you cannot pass it, you don't have the mental capacity. Hallelujah! Ang hirap pumalapak kasi... So, before we declare, before we claim, before we profess, or, or uh, we, we would be arrogant enough to say that we are seeking the kingdom of God, do we really understand what does seeking the kingdom of God means? Amen. <laughs> seeking the kingdom of God also means to learn. That's why I've said, understanding is different from learning. Na sabi nga nila, may mga matanda daw. So, yun na lang, wala akong pinapatamaan, Brother Ban, ano? <laughs> <laughs> Ako'y tumuntua talaga kay Brother Ban, lalong nag-share siya ngayon. May mga matanda daw, tumatanda, walang pinatandaan. <laughs> Does it make sense? So, they grow up without learning. Does, uh, even 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5, although I will mention it later, there are people who are the, having the form of godliness but denying its power. Why? Because they're not learning. Okay? Seeking involves 
taking the time to consider, to meditate in an effort to understand. Yes? Maybe you are taking the time to consider before you say Amen. <laughs> Seeking involves taking the time to consider, to meditate in an effort to understand. Okay, let us true to our, be true to ourselves. Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto us. Who of us sit down, meditate? Ano nga ba ibig sabihin nito? Did we try to do that? <laughs> Okay? Some things require deep thoughts and analysis before they become comprehensible. Comprehensible. Yes. Not all things are understood with just one second, with just one reading. There are lots of things that you understand them as you go along, as you study them further. Yes? Okay? It takes a lot of time for us to understand the kingdom of God by reading, meditating, and memorizing it, it if necessary. <laughs> Sa Pilipinas nga, may mga bata, lately pa, two years old, three years old, kung ano yung lyrics ng kanta, nagagaya na nila. Palibasa kasi, lagi nilang napapakinggan. Not just like children, even adults. Although we don't want to memorize the, the lyrics of the worldly songs, we learn them by continuous hearing. So by hearing them continually, we would be able to sing with them. What I'm trying to say, if you are becoming more familiar with God's Word, if you are trying to memorize God's Word, the more you understand God's Word. Yes? <laughs> Desire is what drives us to seek something. That's why the Lord says, delight yourself in the Lord. Desire. Okay? Seeking involves passion. Passion means strong emotions or strong affections. What makes us get up out of bed? Is it the kingdom or our drive to other things? Drive to other things. At least we are honest. Okay? What is our motivation in working? As I would have learned, as I have I'd said last week, it's, it, seeking the kingdom doesn't mean that we have to quit our jobs. We stop working because the Bible also commands us that six days a day, a week, we should labor. So it doesn't mean you don't have to work. But what is our motivation in working? Are we saying that, oh Lord, I will work today so that I could give a tithe, I could offer something for your kingdom. I work today so that whomever I will encounter, I will try to influence them, I will try to win them for the kingdom. Are we aware of that or are we concerned of that? I don't think so. We just work and work and work forgetting about the kingdom. What are the inclinations of our hearts? Sabi ng Bible, saan daw nahahapay ang puno doon siya matutumba? Natural, nahapay dito, hindi matumba dito. So kung ang, ang heart mo is inclined to the kingdom, most probably, your heart will go to the kingdom. But if your heart is inclined to material world, your heart will go there because the Bible says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What are the inclinations of our hearts? Money, 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 honey, honey, honey. <laughs> <laughs> to seek the kingdom involves diligence and diligence involves discipline. Speaking of discipline again, Brother Roddy understand discipline more than us. Why? Because he is a soldier, a ranger. Oh, hindi basta-basta mga ranger. Okay? Discipline may mean turning off the TV so as to study God's Word. Hallelujah. Okay? It may mean no Facebook for us to be able to study God's Word or pray. Do not say you are seeking the kingdom of God. You can spend one hour a day at least 
even lots of us is more, are spending more than an hour on Facebook and yet reading God's word for 15 minutes you cannot spend time I don't think you are seeking the kingdom of God Amen. One thing that one thing good that happens to me when I went to Kenya is I am becoming more eager to learn, especially as a pastor. Why? Because when I was teaching there, although an hour teaching, it went up to four hours because they've been asking a lot of questions. When I told them because they were asking if I could go back there for a month, Hallelujah. They're asking me to be there for a month. I tell them, <laughs> there's nothing impossible with God, but at, at the moment, it's impossible. Why? I'm still working in the hospital. I've got a work. I've got a job. I've got four kids. For me to be able to come here, my wife should be off or on annual leave as well for her to look after the children. And then suddenly one brother said, you're working in the hospital. You're preaching. How come you remember all these verses that we've been asking to you? Hallelujah. I told them I prepared three to five hours before my preaching. And the pastor said, oh my goodness, here in Kenya, we prepare for our sermon for five minutes. Hallelujah. <laughs> what kind of sermon is that? You just prepared it for five minutes. It's just like, what's our own ulam for today? It's instant noodles. It's instant. You can have it for three minutes. How would you feel if you're just eating all the time instant food? They have been prepared for three to five minutes. Hallelujah. The worst of it, <laughs> malnourished. Okay. So discipline would also mean rearranging our schedule to have more time to pray. Because that's what discipline is all about. So if you're not disciplined, okay. Ah, sorry na lang. It, it may mean sorting out our schedule, our priorities, so, our, so as not to be too tired to gather with other believers for worship. Saturday night, you are not going with the conformities of the word. Saturday night or Friday night na sabi nga ng kata ng sampagita panahon na karamang saya forget mo na ang problema hallelujah ganyan ang ginagawa ng word during Saturday or Friday night but as a Christian we should say having discipline within ourselves we should say I should sleep early so that during listening God's word I would not be sleepy. Are we doing that? If we are disciplined enough, I'm not talking or I'm not pinpointing particular somebody. If we are disciplined enough, in our works, in our jobs, we are trying so much not to be late. How come during fellowship, during Sunday service, not of, uh, all of us are concerned not to be late?
And so with seeking the kingdom of God, it is not an accident. It is planned. It is your plan to seek the kingdom of God? Amen. By accident. Hallelujah. <laughs> seeking the kingdom of God also means to be preoccupied with it. We have touched this last Sunday. Okay? We should be thinking of it all day, every day. Amen. Amen. It is not just thinking the, God, the kingdom of God on Sunday. It is not just thinking the word of God from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock, but every day, all day. Amen. Because that's what preoccupied means. Are we preoccupied? Maybe not just with the kingdom. Preoccupied with how many bank ships could I see? How many babysitting could I accept? <laughs> how could I pay my debt? How could I send money back home? How could I earn lots of money? How could I pay my rent out? Hallelujah. Am I right? Yes. <laughs> okay. We should evaluate every decision in light of how it will affect our pursuit of the kingdom. I will explain that later. Our every thought, word, motive, and action is kingdom first. Is it happening? If we are seeking the kingdom of God first, in our mind, in our word, in our hearts, and our action is kingdom first. But I don't think the kingdom is first in our lives. Maybe it's a fifth priority, tenth priority, worse if it's the hundredth priority. If we don't seek the kingdom of God first, it's just like putting the cart in front of the horses. Does it make sense? Yes. Dito na yung kabay at sa huli yan, nauna yung cart. Bakit kasi ang sabi ng Bible, seek the kingdom of God first. Since our, our preoccupation, our pursuit in life are the material things, you are just placing the cart in front of the horses. I don't think it does work. Uh, amen? Okay, kingdom first, what does it mean? Principal thing, the first thing above and far and beyond all other things. First thing about, ah, you might say, okay, I will do first the kingdom of God and then I put, I can do my rest. Does it mean like that? Does it mean like that? Okay. You uh, did transport. How would you react if Dandan will say, you are my number one, but sorry, I'm just honest enough. I have number two. How would you react? Ayos na? What will do you do? Maybe that's how martyr you are for Dandan. You should be grateful for her. But it should not be our number one, but one and only. Yes? Okay? More important to us than anything else, placing the greatest value of all the, of all the kingdom and stand ready to sacrifice anything and everything. Does it make sense? If we seek the kingdom of God first, we are ready to sacrifice anything and everything. Why? Because we are placing the greatest value on the kingdom. To explain my point, Matthew chapter 13 verse 44. Again, the kingdom of God is, the kingdom of heaven is like a, a treasure hidden in the field which a man found and hid, and for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. He gives up everything just for the sake of the treasure, which is the kingdom. Another, verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls. Okay? Who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Why? Because mahalaga na sa kanya ang kingdom. Di ba naman wala ang lahat? But since most of us are pursuing the material things, we lost the kingdom, we don't even care. Yes? We 
medyo ang hirap talaga baka mabigat ang tapi. <laughs> Am I right? Okay. First means we are resolved the kingdom of God as our priority or primary interest. Kingdom first does not mean first among many but first and only. Why first and only? Exodus chapter 20 verse 3 You shall have no other gods before me. If you have studied the Bible, especially the Old Testament, carefully, the most and foremost sin of the Israelites is to worship idols. Yes? So God said, you shall have no other gods before me. He didn't say, you can worship me on Sunday, but on, on Mondays through Saturdays, you can worship other gods. That's why we, when Satan tempted Christ to worship him, to kneel before him, Jesus told Satan, it is written, worship the Lord thy God alone. Yes. Amen. Amen. Seeking the kingdom of God first means considering the interest of the kingdom before making decisions. Let me make my point clear. Who are you going to marry? When you're getting married or when you marry somebody, is the kingdom of God part of your decision or number one consideration? No. No, because you haven't preached or you haven't heard the gospel of the kingdom before. Yeah. So, you've got a good chance. And I'm so happy that Dandan is here as well. Good sign, maybe. <laughs> am, I, am I right? Okay. Well, which school will, will your children go? Do we consider the kingdom of God? Kristiano kang naturingan tapos ang, ang, ang school na pinapaaralan mo ng anak sa Pilipinas, walang kinakaugnayan sa kingdom ng Lord. What kind of Christian you are? If you're a Christian, your main concern should send your children to a Christian school. Okay? My, my children are studying in a Catholic school. Although, that's my third priority, it's beyond my decision to make it. Because it's the government who decide on, on, on top of those priorities you have, they are the ones who are going to decide. Yes. Okay, another decision to make. What job do we accept? When we accept a job, when we pray for a job, is the kingdom of God our main concern? Oh, if I take this job, I would not be able to attend church. The kingdom of God would be out of me. Okay, I still need it. Does it make sense? Ah, how we spend our money. Do we consider the kingdom of God on spending our money? Hmm. Tapos, sasabihin natin, Oh, Pastor, we are seeking the kingdom of God. When you spend money, did you seek the kingdom of God? Did you uh, try to uh, try to uh, uh, try to ask the Lord, is it appropriate, is it pleasing to the Lord to spend your money? Or just money, 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 money. <laughs> <Do we get? laughs> is our decision in line with the kingdom? Amen. When we make decisions, do we, do we try to consider or do we try to ask if it is in line with the kingdom? Is it pleasing with the Lord? Okay? When compromises arise, do we seek first the kingdom? Do you understand the word compromises? When your, when your integrity, your faithfulness with the Lord is at stake and you will be on some standard, that's compromises. When, when compromises arise, do we seek first the kingdom of God? When our boss asks something dishonest at work, then we seek the kingdom of God. Lord, naintindihan mo naman. Hallelujah. That's not seeking the kingdom of God. Yes? Ah. When boyfriend or girlfriend wanted immoral relationships, is the kingdom of God still our concern? Hmm? Did we seek God on top of our boyfriend, our girlfriend, or our wife, or our husband? Oh, at least God will not be nuggering at me. If I disobey, if 
if I won't follow my wife, my wife will be Hallelujah. Branca, ta, 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 ta. So, it doesn't matter, matter, Pastor. I would rather obey my wife. Ay, wala ang pinutong ko. We will pay our taxes. Do we seek the kingdom of God? Do we declare everything? No. Oy, wala ang pinutong ko. Do we ask if our decisions are pleasing to God? Our problem is we set aside the kingdom of God to avoid offending someone or putting human relationships at stake. We don't want to offend somebody. As the, the term of the word said, it's called rocking the boat. We don't want to get our relationships at stake. Okay, I would like to give you a, a good example. Me and my two sisters are not really in good terms. Do you know why? I rather be called an enemy to them than being a friend to them. Because my sister is not in right relationship with God. So I don't mind. They say I'm against them. They say I'm an I'm, I'm enemy of them. I'd rather choose that rather than being a friend of them. I'm consenting that what they're doing is acceptable. It's, it might be acceptable with the society, but when it comes to the kingdom of God, it is not acceptable. Hate sinners or hate sin but love sinners. Yes? Okay? Ah, developing the habit of considering the kingdom first will help us avoid a lot of mistakes and bad decisions. And bad decisions. It's just not our habit of uh, pleasing the Lord. It's not just a habit of seeking the kingdom of God. That's why we got lots of troubles because we're making wrong decisions. Yes? yes? Uh, the object to seek for the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom? Kingdom. Kingdom. United Kingdom. Seek the kingdom of God. But the question is, what is the kingdom? The kingdom is all things. All things was there. Ah, very far. Sorry. United. Kingdom is United. Yes. The, uh, the kingdom of God means God's government or authority. Does it make sense? Yes. So if we are seeking the kingdom, we are seeking God's authority or government. Just like uh, I uh, used an example before. There are lots of laws in UK that if you go to the Philippines, you are not obliged to obey. Why? Because that's the law of UK. But there are lots of laws in the Philippines, you are not obliged to do it here. Why? Because you are in the UK. So if we seek the kingdom of God, we are trying to submit ourselves to the authority of God. Is it happening? It is His rulership and dominion over heaven and earth. It refers to his jurisdiction and executed will over all his creation. So if we say, this church, although Jake uh, told me that the kingdom of God is the church, no, it doesn't necessarily mean that. This could be a church, but this could not be a kingdom of God. This church could be a kingdom of God if this is under his jurisdiction and his authority. Yes? Yes. Okay? Kingdom means king and domain. Territory. Domains mean territory. So you become a territory of God if you seek the kingdom of God. Or you are in the kingdom of God if you are under this territory or authority. Okay? Seeking the kingdom of God means seeking first his ownership over ourselves and everything we have in life. Too much na ba? Ayos na. Too much na? Okay. Mainam na yung sinisigurado ko. Baka salita ko ng salita. Hindi ko na po si Pastor. Hindi na nga kami sumasagot. Nakatuntigin ka ng God. Illustration. Ah, daughter who wanted to go for a date with her boyfriend. Okay. Let's say for example. Although a daughter wanted to date with her uh, uh, wanted to have a date with her boyfriend, she will consult the parents first if the parents will allow. 
okay lang. Although she wanted to, but she should consult first if he, she got the permission. Ano, alala ko tuloy yung kwento sa Facebook. There were two old uh, husband and wife, old couples. They, the husband said, oh, can, can we try to bring back, bring back our past? Uh, the, and the wife said, okay, uh, let's do it. So the husband went into the river at 3 o'clock in the afternoon with flowers. And then he waited and waited until the evening and the wife didn't come. When he reached home, he told the wife, he asked the wife, why didn't you, why didn't you go to the river as usual, as what we've done before? And the wife told him, because my parents did not allow me to do so. <laughs> Does it make sense? Yes. So, you wanted to do one thing, or it, did you consult God? Did you ask God's permission? Is it pleasing to God? I don't think we're doing that all the time. <coughs> Maybe often, or most of the time, or it's still done. Kingdom also means to have influence over territory. So, his influence should be extended over the entire world of our private life our business life, our marriage life, our relationships, our sexual life, of everything. But sad to say, only our church life are affected by God's authority. On our private life, we don't care. Nobody knows it anyway. Am I right? It means we are under the administration of heaven. Ah. <laughs> Do you know that uh, it's not just Era who is corrupt? It's Gloria as well. Why is she being caught? Because it's not her administration. Her time is finished. What I'm trying to say, whether you are in the Philippines or you are in the UK, if you are seeking the kingdom of God, you are under the administration of heaven. Amen. Okay, this means that God the King becomes our reference point for everything. His will becomes our will. His way becomes our way. His interest becomes our interest. His society becomes our society. His friend becomes our friend. His enemy becomes our enemy because he is our reference point. Is it happening? Enemy ng Lord, baka friend mo. Friend ng Lord, enemy mo. Hallelujah. <laughs> Influence also means impact. In Kenya, the impact of British colonization is so great. Why? Because they drive on the left side of the road, same traffic signs as here. When I drive in Kenya, it's not difficult. Same thing here. In the Philippines, when I drive in the Philippines, after putting on the first gear, I will put my hands on the door. Uy, pinto pala to. Dito pala sa kaliwa. <laughs> Are you getting me? I thought the gear is in, in, in still in the right hand, uh, thinking I was on this side, or, where am I? <laughs> ah, I uh, we're driving here, so the gear is here, but in the Philippines, we're driving on this side, and uh, I'm tempted to, to use the gear on the left hand side, not knowing it's the, do the car's door. Are you with me? Uh, they say they have roundabout, not corner. Roundabouts are pre British influence. They are used to wear suit even on a regular day. Sabi nila, ang hirap-hirap na nga, butas-butas na nga yung bahay nila, wala nga maayos na po bahay, pero nakamil ka na. Why? Because that's British influence. Pupunta ng asda, nakasood. Talong nga ako nagpunta doon, nakakotan naka sa tayo lang ako. Sila na kami kala, sila pa yung parang. Are <laughs> uh, you following me? Okay, contrary to the Philippines, which was impacted by the American. Philippines, does, uh, Filipinos doesn't play football. Maybe there are those who play football, but not a lot. But a grade one people are playing basketball. Why? Because that's American influence. We don't play cricket, we play baseball. Yes? yes? So because of this impact, we can tell which kingdom we are in by the way we live. Aha. By the way we live, could other people 
you say that we belong to the kingdom of heaven? We belong to the administration of heaven? Huh? <laughs> Matthew 7, 20, therefore by their fruits you will know them. Our lives should manifest the fruit, the influence of the kingdom of God for the world to be able to say we belong to the kingdom of God. John 15 verse 19, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yeah, because you are not of the world, but I choose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. Although we are living all in the world, but we are not of the world because we are under the administration of heaven. Yes? Philippians chapter 2 verse 15, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. No matter the, what people or other people in, around you are doing, you don't care because you are under the influence of heaven, among whom you shine as lights in the world. To sum it up, the kingdom of God is the governing influence of a king over his territory or domain, impacting it with his personal will, purpose and intent, producing a culture, values, morals, and lifestyle that reflect the king's desire and nature for his citizens. In other words, our lifestyle, our living, our influence impacted by the authority of God. Is it happening? Yes? Kinda. Last, the inseparable half or, of our pursuit is righteousness. God's kingdom cannot be separated from His righteousness. A kingdom always reflects the nature and character of the king. Why? God is righteous and therefore His kingdom is righteous. Yes? Psalm 15 verse 1, I said to them last night, a son of David, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle, who may dwell in your holy hill. Verse 2, he who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speak the truth in his heart. So if you don't walk uprightly, if you are not righteous, you cannot abide in the presence of the Lord. You cannot abide in the kingdom of God. You will be expelled out of the kingdom of God. Just like what Ch shared or mentioned that he, 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 she, she, She's upset or she do it again, she will be kicked out, expelled. Okay? Romans 3, 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Because of that, Romans 5, 19, for us by one, man, one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Romans 3, 23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but 24, being justified freely by His grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. None of us were righteous, but He justified us. Justification means as if we haven't done anything at all. Yes? But it doesn't mean we are not going to obey. Yes? Righteous is an legal term. It means right positioning. To be in correct alignment with the ruling standard. Hindi ako manhead na parang too much na sa inyo, kaya kong pinapaspasan bago kayo makatulog. It means, we do not violate the law of the ruling government. Okay, uh, very good example for that. In the Philippines, it's okay to urinate anywhere. <laughs> nga sabi ko nga, sabi ng bagnada ko, maswerte daw ng mga lalaki kahit saan-saan umiihi. Sabi ko sa kanya, maswerte tayo kung pati babae ka saan-saan umiihi. <laughs> <laughs> Di ba? Am I right? Pero saan-saan ang iihiging babae? Di bulls ay na. <laughs> a righteous person is in right standing with authority, even with fellowship with authority. Okay? A righteous person is he who conforms his life in every way possible because he is under the kingdom. In the Philippines, I don't, uh, speed is not my concern. Dibdib ang concern kung kaya ng dibdib. Kaya mong magpakamakay, sige, bahala ka sa buhay mo. Ganyan ako magmaniho sa Pilipinas. Pero dito, concern tayo sa speed. Why? I am under, I, I am here in UK. 
And it is so, we do not belong to the world. We are, although we live in the world, but we are out of the world because we are under God's administration. Illustration, nagkapalit ng mukha. Hallelujah. <laughs> Actually, yung sinasabi nila nagkapalit ng mukha, hindi naman talaga nagkapalit ng mukha. Parang nagbihig ka mukha. Tama ba ako? Parang nagbihig ka mukha. Magkamukha. Magkamukha na, hindi nagkapalit ng mukha. Sorry na lang, naalala ko si <laughs> Sister Rita noon na ang kaibigan daw niya, uh, aso, uh, parang magka, sa sobrang, sa haba ng oras niya sa aso, uh, <laughs> halos magkapalit na daw si ng mukha ng aso. Sabi naman ni Joy, kawawa naman yung aso. <laughs>
stand up and uh, continue to allow the Lord to minister into our hearts. Hallelujah. As we sing this song of worship. Let's try to put ourselves in the presence of God. Personal prayer of God for us to see your kingdom come. 